Hi, my name is Marietje Schaka. I'm a member of the European Parliament for the Dutch Democratic Party D66. We're part of the Liberal Group here in the European Parliament. I also serve on the Foreign Affairs and International Trade Committees, as well as on the committee that deals with culture, media, education, youth and sports. And the impact of the internet and new technologies on our societies and the EU's external policies are a central part of my work as a parliamentarian. So I'm even more sorry that I cannot join you today for a lively post-widget panel discussion on the challenges the open internet faces and how we should increase our cooperation to defend and foster digital freedom, both at home and abroad. Just like me, many Europeans probably watched President Obama's second inauguration yesterday on television or internet. Hopes and expectations of the second Obama administration's policies have been widely published in newspapers and on websites all over the world. Most of our European citizens would vote for President Obama if they could. However, there are also many critical questions raised. A key concept that we have a lot of questions about, also related to the internet, is the overall compromise of freedom for alleged security. But other topics like the so-called US pivot to Asia or future policies towards nuclear Iran or the ongoing horrible war in Syria, the world is watching what we're doing. In the EU, especially the launch of negotiations on a comprehensive US-EU free trade agreement is getting a lot of attention. Surely a transatlantic economic boost would be great to get more people to work and to further both of our economic developments, as well as to secure our shared interests and values in a rapidly changing world. Such talks would also provide a good moment to increase our cooperation in other fields in order to prevent new trade barriers, especially related to services or the digital economies, copyright reform and also shared concerns like security, online and cybercrime, we can work together. During the last Transatlantic Legislators Dialogue in early December in Washington DC, we mainly focused on this new trade deal. Members of European Parliament and members of the House of Representatives also discussed closer cooperation on cybersecurity issues on the basis of a non-paper that we prepared. We talked about threats to our critical infrastructures, but also about software vulnerabilities or zero-day exploits and how governments, lawmakers, companies and civil society should work together and start sharing new responsibilities to minimize threats while optimizing the trust and transparency in effective policies. The US delegation of the European Parliament, of which I'm also a member, now has a special cybersecurity working group in which members of European Parliament discuss all kinds of related threats, opportunities and policies from their respective specialities and experiences. And while only a few of my colleagues fully grasp the revolutionary changes technologies bring to our societies, businesses and work as lawmakers, I do believe many share the conviction that protecting our citizens' rights and freedoms is a key priority for all of us. That at least is my experience as a rapporteur for the recent report on a digital freedom strategy in the EU's foreign policy. And though it might look easier to agree on policies that seemingly will mostly affect third countries or the EU's external policies, in our globally connected world, decisions made by European companies and politicians directly impact the lives of citizens elsewhere. Moreover, the EU can only credibly promote digital freedom abroad if we have our own house in order. The changes in the Arab world and the role of social media and internet, new technologies, made it very clear that technologies and freedom of speech online are important engines of change and facilitators of more conventional human rights and freedoms. From a foreign policy point of view, the youth of the Arab street basically created political awareness and a key momentum for the European Parliament to address the concept of digital freedom in the world in a more strategic way and to see how the EU should help or protect people while they're using the internet. At the same time, a huge debate has been unfolding in the Parliament on the ACTA Treaty and how it would have limited or restricted digital freedoms here inside the EU. 
colleagues received difficult questions from their children or sometimes grandchildren who had never shown any political engagement before. So there must have been something going on. Also, the massive protests in the United States and the internet blackout as a protest against the proposed SOPA and PIPA bills did not go unnoticed here. So last December, after a tumultuous year, the European Parliament backed my report and in doing so called for an ambitious strategy to prioritize digital freedoms in the EU's foreign policy. The basic idea is that the struggle for human rights has a growing technological component and therefore digital freedoms should be considered fundamental rights. They are an indispensable element of human rights as they are a modern day vehicle for freedom of expression and freedom of assembly or access to information. The EU must take the lead in promoting and protecting these digital freedoms. Apart from being the world's biggest trading bloc, the EU is also a community of values, which should be at the core of our foreign policies. My report includes many concrete measures. I'll give you some examples. EU trade agreements, development aid and programs, accession negotiations and human rights dialogues should include conditionality clauses, preserving unrestricted access to the internet and ensuring the free flow of information. Digital collection of evidence and proliferation of images of human rights violations should be admissible under international criminal law as evidence in court proceedings. The EU should stop the export of dual-use items and technologies that are used as tools of repression through mass censorship, mass surveillance, tracking and tracing of human rights defenders, journalists, activists and dissidents. While my report had broad support in the Parliament, we now have to ensure that the European Commission and each of the Member States will incorporate the suggestions and guidelines in their policies. They must turn to actions. One encouraging first step is that respect for digital freedoms is now part of the Copenhagen criteria, which candidate EU countries have to comply with in order to become eligible for EU Member States, for EU membership. Still, many challenges lie ahead. Meanwhile, the European Commission is also working on a cybersecurity plan, which I'm eagerly awaiting. Our priority should be to ensure that there is no zero-sum game between cybersecurity and digital freedoms. Now, before wishing you a fruitful discussion and thanking you for this wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts, I would like to note that the outgoing Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and her innovation team led by Alex Ross, have been very important in putting internet freedom and freedom online on the political agenda. Thank you all. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts and I look forward to continue this important discussion uh, and I hope we can do so online. Thank you.